16-2006 of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Chairman Backer. Present. Councillor Dill. Here. Councillor Fritz. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor McKinney. Present. Councillor Moles. Here. Councillor Swift Kayada. Here. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. I'd ask for a motion for approval of our, the minutes of our meeting from October 12, but I don't believe I have those. Does anybody else have them? They were emailed electronically to us. Electronically about them. I received them electronically? Mm. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> I may did everyone receive them electronically? I don't I recall yeah. getting I them did. electronically, but that could be the failure of my yeah. I got a, attentiveness I got a to my home computer. <laughs> well. For those who have seen the minutes, <laughs> would there be a motion to approve them? So moved. I second the motion. How many of the councillors, before we vote on it, have seen the minutes? Yes, I, 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 I've seen them. I skimmed them. Are you so, prepared to vote to approve them? I'm comfortable <laughs> voting to approve them. Okay. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed and abstaining. <laughs> the two derelicts. <laughs> Show councillors uh, Backer and Swift Kayata abstaining only because they haven't seen the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, reports and correspondence. Councilor Moles. Well, I have two, two quick items. First item, let me congratulate Cynthia Dill on a very good election and for getting elected as our next state representative for District 121. I hope she'll do a very good job in Augusta for us. Thank you, Councillor Mulls. Uh, second item, we just uh, had our Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee wrap up this afternoon, uh, where the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, which my fellow councillors have uh, caucused with other councillors to send me to uh, for the last time, and the new county budget is proposed at just over 5%, which is under the LD1 cap for the county. And there are going to be three budget hearings coming up where citizens have an opportunity to voice their opinion on the county budget. Those three budget hearings are held uh, throughout Cumberland County. One of them is going to be on November 20th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at Stimson Hall which is next to the town hall in gray. The other one is on November 27th from 6.30 to 8, immediately following the Yarmouth Town Committee meeting uh, at the Yarmouth Town Hall. And tentatively, we have the third one here on Monday, December 4th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. here in the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall Chamber. And I hope people will take this opportunity to, first of all, go on the county website, take a look at the budget, call any of the commissioners or the county manager or myself with questions, and then come down to the meeting. Those meetings tend to be lightly attended, and it would be really nice if more people would come down, ask the county commissioners the, uh, the hard questions about how they put together the county budget. Uh, but again, this year, uh, I think they've been very responsible, and they have a good budget. The, of course, as usual, the, the, the only reason the county budget is going up as much as it has as the county jail. Uh, the sheriff's department and the jail department, uh, the costs there are, are rising dramatically and they don't have a lot of control there over crime. You know, they have to take what's coming in the door. So again, uh, that's my report on the BAC. Thank you, Councilor Moles. Other items for reports and correspondence? I'd like to um, publicly acknowledge and welcome 
our two newly elected counselors who won't be sworn in until next month, um, Sarah Lennon and Jim Rowe, who are here with us tonight. Welcome, we look forward to serving with both of you. Um, and I also want to um, acknowledge and thank publicly all of the members of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights Task Force um, who served from the end of July until just before the November 7 election, um, all of whom put in a tremendous amount of time trying to sort through um, much information, much of it conflicting, um, to help Cape residents sort through um, the various conflicting facts and information surrounding the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. And I particularly want to thank our co-chairs, Beth Currier and Janet McLaughlin, um, who served uh, very ably um, as chairs of that committee. And I think that's it for reports and correspondence. Um, other than I also would like to just extend publicly my congratulations to our counselor, Cynthia Dill, for her election as our new state representative. I'm sure she'll serve us very well. Thank you very much. So our town manager's report. I would like to defer at this point to the town clerk who's going to give us an update on the election. Um, first, I just want to thank all my election staff um, for doing such a great job. They're really great team players. Um, never asked to go home or leave early. They just, they, what, was, what can I do next was always the response from them. So they were great. Um, and also to thank the public for having such a high turnout. It's great to be a part of a community that takes such pride in the voting process. Um, I do have something else to read regarding the results. Um, something that was drafted this afternoon. Um, following the re public reporting of the election tallies for the town of Cape Elizabeth, questions were asked as to the total votes cast on November 13th today. I reviewed the tally sheets and noted that on the Tabor ballot question, more votes were tallied than the believed number of voters who went to the polls or who voted absentee. A further review of the tape tally indicates that 31 blank voted ballots were automatically sent to a separate section of the ballot box by the AccuVote tabulating machine for hand tallying. In addition, 240 ballots with write-in candidates were also sent to the separate section of the ballot box. The apparent problem occurred when all contests were hand tallied, were hand tallied on these ballots instead of only the write-in candidates. Despite the apparent discrepancy with the ballots, with write-in candidates, no race would have had its outcome overturned. It is not possible for the town to undertake a recount on its own as the ballots are sealed pursuant to Maine law. A candidate for federal, state, or county office could request a recount to the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State's office was notified of the apparent discrepancy in the vote tally this afternoon. Thank you, April. And will there be a formal posting and dissemination of that report? Yes, we can. Certainly. I will get to the report to the Secretary of State's office. I need to write them a formal letter and give them the details of everything, and it'll be sent this morning, tomorrow morning via fax. Okay. Um, it, has the information been disseminated to uh, all of the candidates who are on the ballot, or that's will it what, be? That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> Hopefully. Right. If not, there, we will send out an email as well tomorrow. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Just to clarify, we're sending an email out in the morning to to all of the, the press that we usually send to, or maybe even this evening, and we're sending to all the candidates who are on the local ballots. We're not sending to all, you know, to Olympia Snow and to Jean Haybrightwitz, to all the local, local candidates. We just don't have all the email addresses of all those other folks. I don't think it'll affect Olympia's election. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it, one it, final item, and it's it, by no means um, at the bottom of the list of importance. Um, I was going to save this for next month. But it, this month may be the more appropriate time to do it, and that is to thank Councilors Moles and Fritz, uh, for whom this will be their last um, meeting. Um, Councilor Moles is finishing his first term, three years with us, ably served, and thank you very much for everything you've done. Well, it's and, been my honor. And Councilor Fritz, who is completing her third term, uh, nine years. And a half. 
nine and a half years, that's right. This last one, the last year was an extra half a year. Um, but thank you to both of you. Um, you both bring voices to the council that will be missed uh, by citizens and certainly by your fellow councilors. Don't be strangers. There are lots of ways for your voices to continue to be heard, even though you're not sitting on this side of the dais. There's a microphone there that is always open to you, and I trust that you will both let your voices be heard on a regular basis. So thank you both for all of the time and all of the energy you've given to the town. Welcome. And that brings us to the time for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there is anyone here who would like to speak to and address the council on an item that is not on this evening's agenda, you are welcome to do so at this time. Is there anyone who would like to do so? If you would come to the podium, state your name, address, and spell your last name for us, please. So instead of throwing bricks at us, it's mean we get to throw them back for a change? Or? Sure. <clears throat> I'm uh, Fred Prince, 2 Rocky Hill Road, Cape Elizabeth, citizen since 1966, and a big supporter of the fort. What I just gave you was a brick, which my son and I appropriated from the fort when they burnt down the barracks buildings, and which graced my front walk until my wife decided that it was time to update. And they were sitting on the uh, side of the garage and wondering, what could I do with these? So I decided I wanted to give each of you a brick for a very important reason. As I said, I've been in the town since 1966. In that time, we've had three, election, uh, three council votes, all four to three, to keep the fort free and not sell off land. We finally had a citizen's vote. And I think it'd be very safe to say that it was a landslide to do exactly what we had, had been f fighting for for all these years. The reason why I gave you the brick was because the vote not to charge a fee is not a vote for higher taxes. I think this town and all of Maine has got to start to look for new ways of raising revenues. So that's why I gave you the brick. The brick at one time was part of a building that housed uh, soldiers. Now the brick, I hope, on your desk will act as a foundation to start a whole new way of thinking in this town's government as to how to pay for the fort and other expenses or, uh, that, that, that the town incurs. I think the town should have some new goals. I attended a school meeting where they said the town has the best schools in Maine. I'm not satisfied with that. I think the town wants the best schools in all of New England. I think we want the best public service department, I think we already have that in the state of Maine. And the last goal is, I think the town has to reduce taxes every year. And if we reduce taxes every year, and we have the best school system, the result of that will be citizens getting more value for their house. And they've got to love the whole system. Well, that's easy to say, but how do you do it? I came forth the last time with some ideas, some of which were off the wall. And people said, boy, that's off the wall. And they started thinking about it and saying, well, maybe that's not off the wall. Windmills. I just drove up to northern Maine, happened to go by Mars Hill. Eight windmills out there working. I think we could do four or five here. One windmill uh, generates enough, in, uh, enough electricity to support 1,250 homes. 
set four or five windmills would do the power of the entire town of Cape Elizabeth and be a tremendous income uh, generator over time. There's no cost to the property, we own it. So that cost is eliminated. We have no way about the taxes, we don't pay any. So there'd be more income coming into the town. Secondly, I, su I suggested we uh, take part of the fort where we have that awful graffiti on one of the gun mounts and turn that into a uh, uh, facility where we could hold the remains of cremated bodies. On the outside, we had the gun mount, put a Vietnam wall type memorial or acknowledgement to the people who were inside the gun mount. Now, I estimated we could get between 10, 10, uh, two and 3,000 people uh, or bodies in there at $10,000 a pop. That's $30 million. You invest that money and you withdraw 6%, that's a million eight every year. That's reducing taxes. Take that from the windmills and we're starting to cut our taxes down. But in order to do all this, we have to start putting into effect those mechanisms so the fort cannot be sold and will always be free to the use of the general public. And that's why I wanted to start speaking now because there was a third recommendation that came up. And this is, came, came Mr. Prince, I'm gonna ask that you honor the council rule of three minutes why? for speaker say it beforehand. and wrap up if you would please. Uh, I, I'll wrap it up when I'm done. You didn't say that at the beginning. If you had, I would have gotten it shorter. Well, it is a council rule that you're familiar with. You've appeared before us a number of- Not on general comments. Pardon? Not on general citizen comments. I've never heard that before. If you could wrap it up, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Uh, we can cut expenses, medical. Uh, the $2 million which you have invested, we can invest it in a, in a different way. In short, there are a lot of ideas that we can take part of in this town to build a new foundation, to reduce our taxes, and to incur and, and to cover the costs which you incur. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council on any item that is not on this evening's agenda? I would With like to make one brief comment on the brick. Uh, recently, I've been out touring colleges with my children, and I've noticed that a lot of colleges have had to do fundraising campaigns for new college buildings and gymnasiums and whatnot. And I find very popular named bricks, where they have a walkway and everyone buys a brick in the walkway and their name appears on the bricks. Uh, maybe there are some spots over in the fort that need a new walkway you know, where you could sell a brick for $10 or $25 a brick and maybe raise some substantial funds that way. So uh, thank you, Mr. Prince, for your you stopping by. Oh. Also on the battery, yeah. the one right next to the light. See what a good idea it is? The, the Centennial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so, a great idea and we yeah. should keep doing it. <laughs> So we'll move on to our first agenda item, which is item number 153-2006, a public hearing on proposed amendments to the traffic regulations. Um, this item is, was scheduled for public hearing this evening. However, we discovered that the public hearing was not properly advertised in the Portland Press Herald seven days before the hearing, which means that we will not hold a public hearing this evening. Um, Instead, what I'd like um, is a motion to set the public hearing for our next meeting, Monday, December 11, so we can properly notice it and hold the public hearing at that time. I'm just wondering if anyone came to make comments tonight that might want to say something. Is there anyone here this evening? Thank you, Councilor Fritz, for that. Is there anyone here who did come to speak on proposed amendments to the traffic regulations? Okay. Do we have a motion to reset this for public hearing at our December 11, 2006 regular meeting? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? The motion is approved. The matter is set for public hearing at our next regular meeting on December 11, 2006 at 7.30. Our next agenda item is item number 154-2006, a proposed $1 monthly sewer rate adjustment <clears throat> to customers with submeters. If I could ask our town manager to introduce this item. 
Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman Becker. And, and after which, we'll invite public comment from anybody who is here to speak on this. Uh, thank you, Chairman Becker. Uh, as I think most everyone's aware, the Portland Water District is going through a process of updating their uh, water meters. Uh, it's altogether about a $9 million project. Uh, part of that requires uh, changing over some of the submeters uh, that, that measure the outside water usage uh, uh, that, that's not going into the sewer system. Uh, there's about 763 customers in Cape Elizabeth who have submeters that measure their outside water usage, and for that, uh, they get a, an equivalent reduction on their uh, on their sewer bill of a little over. It's uh, four, actually it's four dollars and twenty five cents uh, per hundred cubic feet uh, uh, that's of outside measure water usage. Uh, the water district uh, has met with a number of the communities almost a year ago now, and it was recommended, and they sent a letter out to all the customers uh, saying there'd be a two dollar increase in. Uh, in the sewer rate for uh, submeter customers. Uh, we had a couple of meetings with the water district. We ascertained that their estimated cost for the submetering program, just for the, the, the changes they need to do to those, is uh, $1.25 per month per meter based on their amortizing their cost. The balance was for customer service, uh, you know, and we're, we're already paying for that anyway. And, uh, I have received the assessment for the water district for next year, and because other debt service, just received it this past week, because other debt service is decreasing, our actual assessment is not going up next year. Our assessment is going to remain flat, but there is more of it that's going to be devoted to paying for this uh, modification of <coughs> submeters. Uh, it was, it's been my recommendation that we, uh, rather than have the submeter cost go on all customers, that it go on the submeter customers, and of the one of the dollar twenty-five, it was my recommendation that we we uh, seek a dollar of that as a surcharge per month for those customers uh, with submeters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that. Anyone who would like to speak on this matter, if you would come forward and do that now, and if you would again state your name, address. And Reverend spell Jennison. your last name for the clerk, please. Reverend Jennison, 63 Spilling Avenue. Uh, you get to have a couple of questions from the manager. Uh, this fee for these submitters ever going to expire? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I would assume not, but uh, it's, if you look at the amortization schedule, they're amortized over 10, of, 10 to 15 years. Um, then I would suggest that the council will know on this uh, why should uh, why aren't we given the opportunity like we had to in, to begin with and buy this retrofitting up front? Uh, I myself uh, have had to buy two meters from the water district already, uh, sub meters, uh, because the original one uh, they had changed the outside thing, so. Uh, I had to buy another meter. The originally were red and different, identical to the present water meter that I made here anyhow. Uh, the cost according to the current is approximately, and I believe you just said, $25 per house. Why aren't I given the opportunity to purchase this up front, number one? Number two, why don't we have this tied down? Uh, two years, it should come off. Uh, why should it go on and on? And then the people that, I mean, we're only talking nickels and dimes, but they add up. When the town went into this with the water district back in your day and mine, Mike, we thought it was a great thing, and it still is. But somebody has to watch the water district and control the water district, and, and, and I think there's some loose ends here that haven't been tied up. Uh, before this council votes a dollar fee, or that's my feelings. The second thing isn't why well, I'm here, but is there a sewer rate increase coming up this July? Uh, Applied to your agenda yet, tonight? Yes, Mr. Dennison. That was approved on April 26, 2006, 
a dollar increase on July 1, 2006, and a dollar increase on July 1, 2007. So that's two increases that our sewer users are getting instead of the one that we thought, and we've had no notifications. Per our manager, before that other increase, we would not have to increase sewer costs for these two sewer works and things. Uh, last time around in July, there wasn't a councillor who remembered that and questioned him on it. And now I'm looking at another dollar. So these dollars keep sneaking in there and keep adding up. We're already one of the highest people users in the county, as you know. So I urge you, number one, I'd like to have the opportunity to pay up that $24. Number two, I'd like to have it tied down that that fee is only for that and not going to keep going on. How do you justify the other people not paying anything if it always keeps going on? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dennison. Could, could I respond briefly to one thing? I just want to say Mr. <clears throat> Dennison is correct. I did say two years ago when the sewer project was going to happen that I didn't think that there'd be needs for increases and I just wanted to say that you are correct and I agree with you that I said that. Thank you Mike, I didn't want to put you on Thank the you. hot seat. That's but okay. You didn't get back to me on this. <laughs> <laughs> no harm. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this agenda item this evening? Do I have a motion on this? Is anyone interested in making a motion? Councillor swift Kayata. I have a question yeah, first, because I wasn't sure if I heard the last couple sentences of what the manager's report was. I thought the proposal we were looking at was a $1 monthly surcharge for customers with submeters. But did you say 125? My recommendation is a dollar. The water district estimates the cost at a dollar and a quarter of the original two dollar increase. But, but I, it is still your recommendation. It's still my recommendation to have a dollar and not a dollar and a quarter. And do we know how many people in Cape Elizabeth this will be affecting? About 736. Council Is it affecting only the people with the submeters, that extra dollar? We didn't spread it around everyone else? Okay. It, can I just ask a question to clarify? So this dollar and a quarter per submeter, is that being charged to the town? It is. But it, it is, but you know, as I said earlier, our assessment from the water district is not actually going up because other costs have decreased. See, we go back to, you know, it alludes to what Mr. Dennison spoke about earlier with the, with the overall financial structure of the sewer system. We, we lost money in, in six straight years, I think it was, at the sheet I did. And the, the last two years, we have a little more solvency because we have, in fact, uh, adjusted the rates. And, you know, and this, this is just another issue of, uh, uh, you know, making sure that, that the sewer funds on a solid financial footing. I, to be honest, uh, I might as well be, I, since it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of enthusiasm for this, you know, I expected to get from the Water District an assessment increase because that's what they were telling us they were going to be giving us. In the end, the increase didn't come through, and I thought it was important to put this on the agenda to be considered in case Tabor had passed, uh, because at, at that point, if we didn't do it now, we were going to have a huge problem trying to do it in the future. I, at this point, with Tabor not having passed and with the Water District not actually increasing our assessment, there isn't a strong, a strong need to do this unless you believe in the principle that any expense related solely to the submeters ought to be borne by those with submeters. This doesn't affect water customers at all. It only affects sewer customers. But it, the, the proposed increase is for sewer customers with submeters. Councilor Dill. So, what is the um, implication if we don't assess a dollar monthly surcharge for customers with submeters? What happens? 
You know, it's, it's simply less revenue coming into the system to pay, you know, this, this revenue into our system would pay for sewer line maintenance, it would pay for projects, uh, you know, which, which need to be done. But, you know, without this, you know, we're doing okay with the sewer system and we can still be addressing some of that. We got a problem this coming year, but there's a one year spike in, uh, in sewer costs, which we figured into everything as sewer debt service. Beyond that, old debt service begins to be paid away. So I. So it's 80, around $8,400? Yeah, it's, it's about $8,400 a year. 700 people time, yeah. accounts times 12 times 12 a year. Out of a budget of about $1.4 million. What? So it's, it's 736 households times $1.25. Times a dollar is the recommendation. But aren't we being billed $1.25? You are. So, so the town is getting a bill each month that will increase by 736 households times $1.25. Yeah, we get a bill from the water district for about $100,000 a month, and this is included as, as part of that. Um, so $920 a month <clears throat> times 12 is the annual fee that the town of Cape Elizabeth will have to pay to the water district as a result of this submeter issue. According to the information the water district has given us, yes. Councilor Lynch. I think it makes sense for those who have the submeters to pay the incremental cost. However, I thought that Mr. Dennison raised a good point, an excellent point about once you've paid for that meter, it sh that money should not be embedded in your bill. So I don't want to just drop this topic, but I'd like to um, either have an option where they can pay for the meter up front, or once it's paid for, whether it's two years or three years or whatever, then that extra dollar twenty-five a month, which is twelve, sixteen dollars a year, gets dropped off their bill. Otherwise, we're taking whatever you said it was, eight thousand a year, from the sewer system. And I realize it's not a lot of money, but we have so much sewer work we need to do <laughs> all over this town. It just seems to me to be a bad precedent to take that out. But I do think Mr. Dennison's made some excellent points, and we ought to try and resolve those without throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Well, I agree with what Councilor Lins has just said. And, um, but the, at one point, the Water District was threatening that if we didn't approve this, they were not going to allow people to have the, the meter and be able to reduce their water bill by having a meter because they're watering their lawn and not using the sewer system. So I, I think we do need to clear it up. But that option of being able to pay or have it over, say, a two-year period of time paying it off, and then it goes away. Because the other thing is that the water district is intending to reduce its cost by having by being able to read the meters more easily. And so why would they be charging more for a long period of time? Just, just a suggestion. If a counselor would like to do that, the easy way to do it is simply to, to take, I don't know if there's no, no motion on the table, it says monthly surcharge for customers with submeters, put until December 31st, 2009. That's reasonable. That sunsets it. Mm. That's, that's a good mm. idea. Well, then I would move adoption of the proposed $1 monthly sewer rate adjustment to customers submeters with the amended language um, to read effective January 1, 2007, $1 monthly surcharge for customers with submeters until December 2009. I second the motion. Or through December to be paid to be paid through through so I December 30th. Clear. Yes. I have a uh, question on that as part of the discussion, question for our manager. And it's a follow-up to the comment that Councilor Fritz made um, relating to the water district having apparently said that if this fee wasn't imposed, that the water district would no longer 
permit people to have submeters. I guess I don't understand that um, because my understanding from the conversation to date is that this amount is going to be billed to the town, whether we bill it through to customers or not. Um, so why does the water district care whether the town passes this along to the submeter owners? As long as the water district is getting its dollar twenty-five per meter anyway, why does it care? That's been exactly opposition to the water district, and that's why three months ago the council authorized me to sign the agreement and defer it until later how it's going to be paid for, figuring it was none of the district's business how it's going to be paid for because the council sets rates. So we've already signed the agreement, so that's no longer a danger uh, because they have accepted the principle, although they, they don't like the fact we're not in concert with the other communities. Uh, but I've simply told them we set rates, they don't. But we're not, I mean, if they assess us and then we have a dollar, we need to assess people. That doesn't make any sense either. I mean, it seems to me it ought to be on the customer's bill that has the meter. Other discussion? Was there a second on your? There was. I, I seconded okay. the motion. Um, Thank you. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion as made? Opposed? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. The next item on our agenda is number 155-2006, a review of a progress report and procedural recommendations from the traffic calming slash road safety working group. And would Councillor Dill like to introduce this or is there anyone else here from the working group who would like to present this item? I just checked in the camera. Councillor Dill? Yes, thank you. Um, I would first of all just like to thank all the members of the Traffic Calming Road Safety Committee. Um, it's been a um, productive group and as the uh, memorandum states, um, we are requesting um, an extension of time to further and hopefully complete our work. Um, we have thus far held a public forum and have met um, a number of times and are in the process of drafting a traffic calming policy to be recommended to the town council. We also planned um, to recommend specific bike and uh, pedestrian safety improvements for three areas that have been designated as priority areas. And we also would like permission to explore um, the concept of maybe adding to or separating as a distinct group um, to specifically um, study and make design recommendations for the Shore Road Route 77 intersection. And I'd be willing to answer any questions, but the request of the council this evening is to extend our um, operating time until at least March of uh, 2007, at which time we will report back, hopefully with a draft policy and specific recommendations for bike and pedestrian safety improvements. So moved. So it, okay. Now I was just going to ask if that was the motion, it, just to clear yeah. point of information here. In the packet it said the group would like an extension to March 07 and would like to be involved in the design process. But you, you just talked about the motion was just about the extension. Um, I think. Does it include both? Or? Yes, I think the motion is to clarify. Thank you, Anne. Is the motion is to um, have an extension until March of 2007 um, and also for authority to uh, designate a separate um, group to specifically explore and get involved in this design um, process for the town center. Because I think our feeling is that we just we need more people on the, um, on the committee to look at some of the design concepts for the, um, the intersection. And I welcome Carol Fritz is on the committee with me. I don't know if you have any further comments, Carol. Well, I, I would just like to clarify the second item on that first 
page, I think we haven't really discussed construction of specific bike and pedestrian safety improvements. I would say it's that we would be looking at recommending specific bike and pedestrian safety improvements, not necessarily construction. Um, they could be educational, it could be signs, they could be, you know, but we haven't really discussed the concept yet. Any specific concepts? Um, with regard to the design yes. of the, um, the Scott Dyer Road, Shore Road, Road 77 yes. intersection, um, I guess I'm not clear on what role exactly the working group would like to play. Would, does, um, I mean, I don't, yeah. I guess I should turn to the manager for this and ask who's responsible for the, the design of that to begin with, to the extent that the working group is asking for input, input to what other group that's currently involved in that or responsible for that design? Well, I'll respond, and then Mike obviously is invited to respond as well. I mean, we understand that the main Department of Transportation has ultimate authority over the design and final plans, but what we'd like is to have an active group that works with and collaborates with MDOT to remind them that we have ideas about what we feel it would look like and, um, and just to, to stay involved in the process so that the final design reflects our values as, as a community and not necessarily just the generic um, aesthetics that might come down from Augusta. So whether or not we have a lot of pull remains to be seen, but we'd like the opportunity to influence the, the final outcome of the design. Um, well, so maybe what the group is really asking is that the scope of its charge be expanded to include making a recommendation to Maine DOT for the design of that intersection. Um, we, that's fine, uh, but also I think to include additional people. I think what we want as a group is to have a subcommittee that specifically focuses on the town center design and works with the MDOT and sort of stays in touch with that process and, and provides input and direct lines of communication. Another <coughs> subgroup of us feels we want to devote our energy to the bike and pedestrian safety issue. They're just two very separate things and that for this one group to sort of be working in, on both concurrently is um, a little bit unmanageable. Um, does the group have a specific list of people that it would like to have added for the purpose of working on the design of the intersection? I know there are um, committee members, Richard Berman in particular, who feels that there are some c citizens in the community that would be very helpful and willing, um, design engineers and um, various other professionals. Um, he feels um, we could invite as well as um, just, I think what we, we need in this committee um, some more citizen input because it's a committee that's essentially made up of all town employees um, with the exception of maybe one, one or two committee members. And so we feel at this point that we'd like to invite a few more people and split up to attend to these two what we feel are distinct and important um, issues. And, and the only reason I'm asking that is I'm just wondering whether in recognition that we don't really have the power to appoint you to or appoint anybody to a group that would include the main DOT. But if we're looking for a group that might have some semblance of credibility in its recommendation to the main DOT, wondering whether that subgroup should be separately appointed by the council as opposed to sort of invited in by the road safety working group. So wondering whether if the road safety working group has a core group of whether it's three or whether it's six people that it would like to have working on that, whether that perhaps those names should come back to the council with a request that the council formally appoint those named individuals to that design recommendation group. So when they do go to Maine DOT, they'll at least have the imprimatur of a council appointment behind their recommendation. I think that's an excellent idea and I'd be happy to bring that uh, concept 
back to the Road Safety Committee. We meet again next week. But I think the, the willingness to get involved in broadening the scope of your work to look at that is a great one. So thank you. You're welcome. Councillor swift Kayata. I too think it's, I appreciate <laughs> your willingness, your group's willingness to work on it. My only concern is I just want to, I'm not sure how the process works with DOT, um, but I want to make sure that if such a group is appointed or expanded or whatever, that it is clear to DOT that they are not the monolithic representation necessarily of, of Cape Elizabeth. You know what I mean? That it's a private board, not private board, but a, sort of a sub committee that is making recommendations. <clears throat> I would anticipate you'd want to get public input on whatever your design ideas were, and I don't know what they are. But um, for the same reason that we have all sorts of boards and commissions in town, when they make recommendations of policy, they usually, or major recommendations, they usually flow up through the council. You know, when um, I'm thinking of Fort Williams or of the library or, or whatever, and so I would just want to make sure that the charge of the committee is very clear and that DOT has a very clear understanding so that they don't go off on whatever their process is in confusion about sort of who's in charge. And I think David's right. I think DOT is probably, they're in charge and they're going to making, be making design decisions. But um, I think it's great to provide them with all sorts of input. But I just want to make sure the roles are, are very clear, both to the committee members and to DOT, so that there is a potential for some confusion about who's recommending what and who represents whom. I'll just respond briefly. Yeah, the whole DOT process is a little bit cloudy yeah. <laughs> uh, as to timing and to um, process. And um, we have clarified with our committee that Bob Malley is the person who is going to be speaking to MD MDOT on, you know, on behalf of our group. And the manager has, has helped us in sort of, you know, bringing us down to reality that we really aren't going to have a lot of pull. But there are some members of the committee who feel that we should at least be present and um, that um, we can offer some um, ideas, like I said, that represent our values as a community in terms of aesthetics and, and design. Um, but I hear you. And I think, ultimately, the final design has to be approved by the council anyway. So, oh, so yeah. I'm so, aware of that. It, it, Whatever happens, ultimately the final plan will come up to the council and um, be presented as a recommendation, and we'll have at that time an opportunity to, you know. Great. Yeah. You're way ahead of me. Councilor Lynch. I wonder if, for purposes of tonight, um, we should just have a motion that extends the time for the working group's report to March 2007 and spend a little more time. Um, coming up with the framework of what this other group looking at the intersection design would do and be charged with and what the makeup would be. It sounds like there's no time issue here that we could do that in the next month or two and at the same time extend the time for the working group. And I realize there may be some overlap, but it seems a little bit mushy to mm -hmm. me tonight on the second part. Well, and, so, yeah. and, the, and the first part has already been made by motion by Councillor Moles. Um, I don't think there's been. Do a, we have an official second? I don't think there's been a second yet because I stepped in and asked some questions, and I think Councillor Swift K ought to ask some questions before we got to a second. But that motion, as and, and you've I think suggested, it's, is appropriate, has been made. And I think it's important also because um, design and aesthetics always turn into money and whether the state's paying or, uh, or what share the town might be paying. Um, I think we need to be sensitive and make sure that there are people on that committee that are sensitive to those issues, too, because I'd hate to lose the traffic light, which um, has been identified for so long as a great need. Um, well, in all due respect, I don't see any reason why we'd, I mean, given your suggestion to simply um, report back to the committee that we would come up with a 
working group to be recommended to the, to the council. I, I just assume move forward on that. Um, it's not that difficult or complicated of a concept to um, appoint a separate committee to make design recommendations, uh, whether the recommendations are financially feasible ultimately will, you know, be left to be seen. I think there's, um, there's always an issue about cost, but so I would like to um, just, again, have the, um, the motion be to extend the working group's time until March for a report and to um, just be given um, permission by the council to enlist um, people from the traffic calming group um, and make a recommendation to the council for a separate working group. And in the meantime, if other councillors have recommendations to that group or committee, to consider that as well. Do you want it to be a separate, com totally separate committee or an extension of the committee? Um, I was thinking that it was a subcommittee, but yeah, not just a, a subcommittee of the traffic calming working group that would invite more people in to deal with this specific issue of design recommendations for the intersection. Mr. Chairman, why don't I draft something for the traffic calming committee to look at uh, at their next meeting, and then they can see if they want to propose it back to the council next month. All right. That's fine. That's so, do we so have at a this point, the motion by Councillor Moles to extend the time the the time frame. I'll second it. Well, let Tomorrow. me make sure I know what the motion is. Could could you? Um, I believe the motion is to um, extend the uh, the uh, working time frame for the road safety traffic group to report back to the council to March of 2007. Okay. Correct? That's yes. the motion I intended to second. Okay. Motion by That's Councilor the motion Lynch. I intended to go, so moved on. Second by <laughs> Councillor Lynch. Do we have further discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. The next item is number 156-2006, approval of the new collective bargaining agreement with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. Would the town manager introduce this for us, please? Yeah. Uh, thank you, David. The, I think as everyone's aware, we had a uh, long session negotiations uh, with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. Their original contract expired June 30, 2005. I'm pleased to report that the parties have come to an agreement uh, for a three-year contract beginning July 1, 2005 and extending out uh, until uh, June 30, 2008. Uh, it is in keeping with bargaining instructions uh, given by the Town Council and uh, it does uh, you know, maintain uh, the defined contribution uh, as, the primary retire as, the prim as the retirement offering of the town along, along with uh, Social Security. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Doble, the, the president of the association, and uh, the others for working with us to uh, come to this agreement. And it has been uh, approved by the, by the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. Uh, they are willing to accept it. We've figured out the retroactive pay. And uh, thanks to uh, the chief and uh, Arlene uh, up in the uh, payroll office. and. Uh, the council approves this. Uh, it will be all squared, ready to go, sign it tomorrow, and move forward. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak to the council on this item? OK. I'll move approval of the new collective bargaining agreement with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association mm -hmm. as uh, set forth in our council packet. Second. Discussion on the motion? Councilor Moles. I'd just like to say that we have some of the finest police officers I've ever met, and everyone in town should be very proud of the police department and the fire and, and other safety departments that we have here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the dispatchers do a great job, and I think through this whole uh, bargaining process uh, that they have uh, performed their duties very well, and, uh, you know, as, as Tense as these things can be at times, I think for the most part they acted with class and dignity and 
uh, they should be commended for that. Agreed. They have, um, I'd like to echo Councilor Moll's comments. The um, police officers of this town have, sh have always shown uh, tremendous professionalism in the conduct of their duties and particularly throughout this protracted negotiation process. They've been um, extremely professional. They've, uh, their work and service to the town is appreciated by all citizens, and I think we all realize that much of the work they do is um, somewhat invisible sometimes to uh, citizens on a daily basis. Um, they work very hard, and they do a great job for us. We appreciate it. I also want to extend my thanks to our town manager uh, for the excellent work that he has done um, also shepherding this negotiation through um, a long process. And Michael, you've done a very good job. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and um, our thanks to the police officers of our town. That said, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. <coughs> Thank you to all. The next item is 157-2006 approval of renewal of annual malt venus spiritus license for paputic golf club can i have a motion please so moved second mr chair motion by councillor lynch second by councillor moles and councillor fritz is going to ask to recuse herself i am <laughs> since i'm a stockholding member of paputic i Asked to recuse, be recused. Um, do we have a motion to recuse <laughs> Councillor Fritz? I, I'd like to disclose that I'm a member too of Perputa. And I, I don't feel I would need like to, to say myself, I, but I'll leave that up to the council. Okay. So. I'd just like to say I don't think that people under our rules need to be. Um, recused or should recuse themselves. Our rules go to pecuniary interest um, or bias. Um, it seems to me that it's not much different than someone who shops at the IGA and maybe we have something about the IGA in front of us or something that might affect uh, one or more of the churches and we happen to worship at the churches. So uh, again, I. Carol has raised before the recusal, and I've raised again, that I don't think it's appropriate. And I think it's important that we all vote on these things, unless the rules require that we recuse ourselves. What would happen if four of us were members of Perputic? We couldn't even vote on this. <laughs> well, I'm a so, member, and I'll be voting, so. <laughs> OK. Well, I think Councilor Lynch's comment is, is well taken, and I think it's important that the disclosure be made of membership. But beyond that, I tend to agree with Councilor Lynch that recusal isn't necessary. So the recusal is a vote, I think, right? You move to recuse yourself, so we need to actually have a vote on the recusal. Do we have a second on her motion? Seeing none, it dies for a lack of a second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of the motion to approve the uh, new license for the Paputic Club? Okay. Seven in favor, one opposed. Thank you. Carol, nine years. <laughs> Finally voted on this one. <laughs> you wouldn't remember at the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, I thought yeah, Paul I mean, was going to have to But I think, seriously, there. it is an issue. Um, two people are members. Mm -hmm. You could easily have a council with four people who are members. And well. then you would not be able to have a vote on it. Good point. Item number 158-2006, review of recommendation from Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding proposed benches near Portland Headlight. Is there someone here from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission who would like to present this item to us? There is. Would you favor us at the podium, please? I'm Ellen Nadeau from Nine Apple Tree Lane, and I happen to chair the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. And we had discussed the proposal for the benches, and we have come up with a recommendation that we sent to Mike McGovern that there be two six-foot curved granite benches and one six-foot rectangular granite bench. And this would be for the new cliff walk area, the southerly. 
And after much consideration, and we did do a walk around in April and looked at the area, and we just felt that the aesthetics in that particular area, it's just so visual and it's such a great impact, that we really didn't want to see a lot of wooden benches. So we really opted to be minimalist and go with something that we thought the granite is so much in keeping with the landscaping and the, the rock area that this is what we proposed. And we sort of arbitrarily picked these numbers and suggested that uh, the curved benches be at 8,000 and the rectangular bench be at 6,000. Any questions? Councilor Lynch. Um, what would the net proceeds be, Ellen? And thank you, by the way, for all your work on this. I'm sorry, where's Mr. Malley when I really need him? Um, I'm not sure what the, what the granite benches would be. I know the wooden benches are different, but I'm sorry, I don't know what that would be. But there would be some net proceeds. Oh, yes. And, uh, I don't know what the cost that. of the benches. And traditionally, that has gone right back into the uh, capital fund. Capital fund, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Councillor Fritz. Um, I'm assuming that those, if, if somebody wanted to uh, pay $8,000 for one of the benches, that you have a design. I mean, they would both be the same. The, the individual wouldn't pick out yes, the we, bench we, that they like. You, we would pick would, that curved right. bench, yes. Councilor swift Okay, I have one other question. So uh, is part of your recommendation, I'm looking at the memo that, that you wrote for us, um, is part of your recommendation also um, the, the comment in the next to the last paragraph about uh, we have an, the advisory commission feels they have an adequate number of benches in the park and that future gift donations made in honor or in memory of loved ones should be in the form of new plantings of trees or landscaping. Is that part of the recommendation you've made or was that more just in the line of a general comment? Well, we feel it, it would be, I suppose, a general comment, but we, we feel that there are sufficient benches, and if we could influence that, we would suggest that future donations be given to, to uh, new landscaping. I just wanted to make sure I, I knew what the motion was going to be about tonight, if it was restricted just to these benches, the specifics on the benches, the curved and the straight benches, or if we were voting more on a, a policy, that's all. I believe our intention was really addressing the benches specifically. Our wishes may be to consider that going forward we would do this differently. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Thanks. Ellen, did yes. excess funds from the sale of the other park benches also go into the capital fund? Yes. This is the only question that I have, and I realize that you said that you, know, you picked the price tag somewhat arbitrarily. but. In light of the fact that so many people were willing to purchase benches before, just wondering whether people would be willing to pay for one of these at a higher price than what you're proposing. I don't know. I couldn't answer that, but I mean, we're. I, I can't answer that either, but, but the rates for these curved are, in fact, approximately double the rate that was being charged before, so uh, they, they, they would be substantially profitable, but I, I don't know the exact cost, uh, as, as Alan does not know. Right. I'm sorry. I'd have to get that from Bob if, in fact, we um, have the specific design of the bench. I'd be happy to report back on that. Well, it's just the, the notion that mm -hmm. to the extent that these seem to be a fairly desirable memorial for people. Um, sort of in line with the law of supply and demand, if there are only three of them available, um, I wonder if there would be some families willing to pay more. Um, Councilor Fritz, then Councilor Lynch. Um, I just wanted to comment that um, I'm glad that the Fort Williams uh, Advisory Committee is thinking of limiting the benches, because I think there are quite a few there now. I, I think there's an adequate number now, unless they were in other parts of the the park. I believe there are more than um, 50 throughout the park. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a little cautious about the idea of new plantings and, like, say, trees that are in honor of people, because as I understand it, it's, it's 
the town has difficulty saying we'll take care of that tree or those shrubs and um, that adds more to the park maintenance and, and all of that. So I'm, I'm hoping maybe you might think a little bit more about how people might be able to contribute to capital improvements in the park, have the recognition by some sort of plaques or something. If, if a wall is fixed, maybe um, a plaque could have people's names on it that, that worked on that or, or that donated to it. Um, just, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm all for landscaping, but it, it seems to be a problem for the town to always be responsible for a tree, and if it, if it dies, then what do you do, you know? Look, um, we had a discussion at one point, I mean, it, talking like into per per perpetuity by saying, you know, if the, if the landscaping would cost X amount of dollars in a maintenance program for that maybe X number of dollars per year so that when a family or, or donor is willing to give, that it's not just the cost of the item, but it would be a built-in how we take care of it going forward. That's a good point. That's how address Very good point. It's like a mm. cemetery and plot. Councilor mm. Lynch, I think you had your hand up as well. Well, following up, David, on your point, I wonder if we were to just um, have a motion that said we accept their recommendation that um, the benches be sold for not less than, and leave it somewhat open-ended so that if you find out that 10 families are lining up to do this and there are only three, maybe there's some opportunity to raise. Maybe they need to be auctioned. It's large. Sounds a little crass to me, but I guess that's what we're talking well, about. Well, it could be done at a silent auction fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> But. Would you like to make that as a motion, Councilor Lynch? I, I guess I would. Um, so I would uh, recommend that we accept the uh, report of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission with respect to the park bench program and um, authorize them um, to proceed with the placement of two six-foot curved benches for donations of not less than $8,000 and one six-foot rectangular bench for a donation of not less than $6,000. Second. Second by Oops. Councillor Moll. Mm -hmm. Discussion on the motion. They're both six according to the rectangle. They're both six according to the memo, right? Yes. yes. The curved ones are six foot. So is the rectangular one is as well. I'm re just reading the memo. Right? The curved ones yes. are eight. Yeah. The straight one is six. six. Oh. So I think. Oh, the yeah. first sentence says two, two, curved. two six foot curved benches. That's what I have. Two. My memo one says rectangle. two six foot curved benches and one, and one rectangular six foot bench. All those in favor of the motion. The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Ellen, very much you. to you and the rest of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. They do a good job. They do a great job. Item number 159-2006, proposed utility pole location on Spurwink Avenue at intersection of Pleasant Hill Road. I move that we approve the request of Central Main Power to move the utility pole from one side of Spurwink Ave to the other side at Pleasant Hill Road. I second the motion. Discussion on this motion? Councilor swift Kayata. I'd just like to ask the manager, are there any objections or concerns from anybody in public safety or anybody in the town? We sent notice to the residents on right in that immediate vicinity of Pleasant Hill, that lot as well as the one across from it, and we have not heard from them, but we did send them a copy of the application with a notice of tonight's meeting and an indication of an email as well. We have not heard. And there's uh, public safety or anybody like Haven't that? Haven't heard Nobody any has any concerns. No. Okay. Thank you. Other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 
The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number 160-2006, annual approval of general assistance program maximums. Something that we are presented with on an annual basis. We have a motion on this item. Move to accept. Second. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Our last agenda item is 161-2006, citizen vote on pay display vote. And the uh, background on this recites that on November 7, 2006, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth voted in an advisory referendum to reject by a vote of 3,145 to 1,951 the proposed pay display system for Fort Williams Park. It is proposed that the council, consistent with the citizen advisory referendum vote, reject the adoption of a pay display parking fee for Fort Williams Park. And is there anyone who would like to address the council on this item? I do have um, a letter that I have been asked to read um, that was sent to me, and I don't know whether all the members of the council received it. Um, it is from Joel Russ, the chairman of the uh, Fort Williams Charitable Foundation. Um, and he asked that I read this tonight, and with his apologies, um, he was not able to be here. Excuse me, will, be, will we be able to get copies of this? Um, yes. Thank you. Um, I think he was under the impression that perhaps you might have copies, but I will make sure that everybody has a copy. Yes, we'll make sure you have one. Um, this is dated uh, today, November 13, 2006, addressed uh, to me as chair and to the members of the town council. And it says, Dear David and members of the town council, I am personally pleased that the citizens of Cape Elizabeth have voted to maintain free access to Fort Williams Park. I think it is an enlightened and generous commitment to the community of Greater Portland and our quality of life here. As you know, I am chair of the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation. The foundation has been relatively inactive recently, deciding to wait until the issue of parking fees was resolved one way or the other. Given the strength of the vote in last Tuesday's election, I assume the town council will now formally vote to maintain free access to the park, and I encourage that action. I am now excited about putting the foundation to work and appealing to Cape Elizabeth citizens and others who may enjoy the benefits of Fort Williams Park to help us build a healthy endowment and financially support necessary park improvements. I have already scheduled a meeting of our board of trustees to begin developing such a strategy. I'd also like to find an appropriate forum and time to meet with the town council and explore ways in which the foundation can work cooperatively with the town council the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and other interested parties in town to achieve our common interest in sustaining and improving Fort Williams Park for the thousands of people who will enjoy it in the years ahead. We have already scheduled a joint meeting of the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to begin discussing collaborative ways of achieving our mutual interests in Fort Williams Park. I look forward to talking with you soon. Signed, sincerely, Joel B. Russ, Chair. So with that said, do we have a motion? Well, I will make a motion and I will move that we accept the uh, results of the election and um, that we reject the adoption of a pay display system at Fort Williams. I second, second the motion. Uh, motion by Councillor Lynch and a second by Councillor swift Kayada. I know that that was a hard motion to make <laughs> and a second, and I thank you both no, for it. It was not a hard motion. I want to state for the record um, that I'm very happy with the result because for 30 years people have talked about this issue, and I think it's wonderful. The turnout was great. It was a convincing vote, and uh, I said to here three months ago that I uh, wanted to follow the will of the people, and it is abundantly clear what the will of the people is. So I think this is a very good thing. And it was not a hard motion to make at all. 
I'm excited and I'm hopeful that this will energize uh, people to uh, make contributions to the foundation because I continue to believe as someone who walks in the park every day, as I know Mr. Prince does often, um, the park does have a lot of needs. And so um, I, I think this is a great opportunity to um, have the Charitable Foundation re-energized. Further discussion, Councilor Fritz. Well, I, I would just like to say thank you to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and, and I agree. I think it was a very, it's very generous, and, and Fort Williams is Cape Elizabeth's contribution to the regional quality of life. And um, I think they sent that message, and I think that's wonderful. I also enjoyed reading the, um, the essays by the students. Um, they had a lot of variety in what their reasons were. I don't know what grade these students were in. Eighth, eighth, eighth grade. Eighth yeah. grade. Um, Mr. Solander's class. Well, they were very good, and I'm glad they sent them on to us for us to read. So um, thank you to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Councilor swift Kayata. Thank you. Um, I just also wanted to uh, echo Councillor Fritz and Councillor Lynch's remarks, and I wanted to, in particular, thank everybody who wrote me, called me, stopped me in the IGA, uh, sent me emails on, and had opinions, well thought out opinions on all sides of this issue. It was an issue that um, had many um, different points of view, and I appreciated hearing from everybody. I know that everybody I heard from, was, as well as everyone on the council, was sincerely interested in the preservation and enhancement of Fort Williams. And as a, as a past donor to the foundation, I urge everyone to uh, get on board with the foundation and um, make donations to the foundation. I look forward to working with them because the fort does have needs. And I, I'd love to see the foundation take advantage of the, the momentum and the excitement that has been generated on this issue by this very good discussion of the issue. So I just wanted to thank the public as well as everybody on the council and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. They's, they've done uh, yeoman's duty on this and uh, on this issue for a number of years. And uh, I just wanted to thank them. Thank you. So I'm happy to support the, uh, the motion. And the only thing I'd like to add in response to uh, Joel Russ's letter is I would encourage the council and the new council chair to consider early in the next council year, which starts next month, uh, to schedule um, a joint meeting um, of the council, perhaps as a workshop with the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation um, and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to discuss how to seize the momentum um, that exists out there today and help launch a good capital campaign for the park. All those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. We are now to the point of citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to address the council at this time? I would. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, personally thank Councillor Moles uh, for his service to the council uh, three years. We've had a lot of interesting discussions and He's, uh, you know, I think it added an awful lot, particularly to the budget debates and to, you know, a whole host of issues uh, in Cape Elizabeth. And I've, I've had the pleasure of sitting next to Carol Fritz. Uh, nine and a half years. Nine and a half years. You've been there the whole time? I have. Nine and a half years. And, uh, you know, Carol, if, if I could sum up what she's done, I think she's really looked to protect the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth uh, during not only her tenure on the council, but also... Uh, uh, as a former chairman of the planning board, she's been active in a, a number of comprehensive plans, always looking to ensure that uh, the character of Cape Elizabeth is preserved. She uh, has really been involved in, in a number of significant land acquisitions, most notably uh, the Galcrest property. Uh, she looked for the protection of the, uh, the town farm that used to belong to the, the poor of Cape Elizabeth, and now that land uh, was, was purchased as conservation land, but also uh, it, uh, there was an easement placed on it uh, by the land trust for its protection. She was involved in the council assisting with the, uh, the purchase of the Robinson Woods property, 
which had, which was substantial, which was owned by the taking my speech. Oh, you <laughs> and, and all these things, but uh, you know whatever Carol's about to tell you, uh, you know it's she's you know community gardens and recycling and you know. Uh, there's a lot of improvements, and I think it, it really is summarized by preserving the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth. So, uh, I want to thank her for her service to the town and in, indicate that I really enjoyed uh, working with her all these years and having good, healthy discussions, debates, and uh, I think that the town is certainly a lot better off in in very demonstrable ways as a result of her service to the community. So, thank you, Carol. Thank you. <clears throat> Rebuttal, Councillor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just would like to say that it's <clears throat> it's been a really distinctive uh, privilege and honor to serve um, on the town council in Cape Elizabeth, and I really appreciate the confidence that the voters have have placed in me and for these three terms. Um, there's been many changes that have taken place while I've been here. Um, the new public safety building, the public works building, fire station, we did the pool restoration, um, we purchased the community center, then there's been in many school renovations, um, and we established the beach, beach to beacon race. Um, but the, st the town still retains the small town rural character and I'm really pleased that the citizens uh, in the most recent survey that was done for the comprehensive plan uh, reaffirmed the value of that and so I hope that'll continue. Um, there have been some disappointments while I've been on the council. Um, one in particular, actually the three I'll mention, <laughs> but um, one was when um, serving on the historic structures committee for the town um, and it was set up when Cape Elizabeth lost the keepers quarters at two lights um, the committee worked for two and a half years um, came up with some rather minor recommendations actually but an expanded list of um, historic structures in the town um, in the end um, we removed all the individual houses uh, that are of historic significance in our town and we have less than what we started out with and that that was rather disappointing including about a month ago we had the demolition of one of the most beautiful homes in our town um, and that was hard to see uh, at least we took the vinyl siding off the town hall. That was <laughs> one thing we did for historic preservation. Um, I wish we could, we could do something with historic preservation, if not just education of our citizens in the future. Um, I was also disappointed when uh, we did not establish an open space easement at Fort Williams for permanent protection of the entire park. I think that is still something we ought to do. And I was also um, disappointed when citizens lost their privilege to run dogs on Crescent Beach in the off season. Um, but to be more positive, um, <laughs> I'm particularly proud of what, uh, some of the things that we did do. Um, purchasing Gullcrest Fields, I think, was a major acquisition for many reasons. Uh, we built the Public Works Building there. We created multi-purpose uh, fields, and we built trails. And the Conservation Commission is, is I'm just amazed at the, what they've done with the trails there. And I just saw some trails at Stonegate that are amazing and if you haven't been back in to see those uh, it's some wonderful construction um, we so we've made very major pro progress on the Greenbelt um, we've cooperated with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust uh, financially to protect open space and it started with Hobstone where we actually had a three-way combination with the town, the land trust, and the uh, residents uh, in Hobstone. We also cooperated on uh, Robinson Woods and the Jordan Farm easement. Um, and as, as the manager mentioned, um, 
with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, we have a 50-year easement uh, protecting open space for the people of the town on the, on the town farm. Um, I think we also made some major improvements to the layout of the dump. Um, it is the dump, it's <laughs> to me, it still is. Um, we can recycle a lot more material from uh, demolition, like uh, roofing material and metals and all that in the, in the layout that we have. Um, we, we've turned leaves and brush into a saleable product with composting. Um, we created the swap shop, which I think has been very, very popular. And uh, we've instituted household hazardous waste collection on an annual basis, if not a twice a year. Um, I'm very proud of the manager and the town council uh, that we've strived to keep taxes under control and uh, that we've provided town services as efficiently as possible. Um, I very much enjoyed serving on Regional Waste System Board representing Cape Elizabeth seeing them through some tough times, some very successful changes, and um, some new recycling initiatives. I've enjoyed working with members of the town council and the staff. We haven't always agreed, but I appreciate that in all cases, um, people care deeply about issues in our town. And, and it's great that it's a nonpartisan, it's not a political um, board. So. Um, that I appreciate. I've also really enjoyed serving with um, several town cons past councilors like Penny Carson and Henry Berry and John McGinty and Jack Roberts. Um, I'll be watching what you all are doing. <laughs> You're likely to hear from me from time to time. I'm, I'm not going to be idle. Um, I'm going to continue to do uh, follow my volunteer interests including uh, land conservation and historic preservation, the arts and gardening organizations where I already spend a lot of volunteer time. So I really thank everybody for the privilege of serving here. Well, thank you, Carol. You represent um, all the best virtues of citizen activism. And we're all better off for everything that you've done for us. So thank you. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? We are adjourned. I'm <laughs>